everybody, this is Steve Winward. If you think about what you can do with AI Builder, it's pretty incredible. Microsoft has been democratizing the way that you can use AI to automatically extract information from forms. The idea here is to make a data entry a thing of the past. We just released a new feature in AI Builder, which allows you to tag complex tables with the forms processor model. Up until this point, if the forms processor model didn't detect your table, you didn't have any flexibility to customize that. With this new release that's in preview, you can now custom tag a table and train the forms processing model what a table looks like for you. I think this is a really exciting opportunity and something that's really cool that we just released in the AI Builder tool. Let's go ahead and switch over to my laptop and I'll show you what this looks like in action. So here's an example of a form that you can now do with forms processing inside of AI Builder. I've got a Contoso food signup form where several people have signed up with their name, what food they're bringing, and the quantity of the food that they're bringing as well. Up to this point, you would not be able to extract table data from this kind of form inside of forms processing. We now have a preview where what you can do is you can actually train forms processing for what your complex table looks like. And the AI builder model will then pick that up and allow you to process that. So let me show you what that would look like. So now I'm looking inside of uh, the AI builder service. I'm going to now go ahead and create a new AI model. We're going to choose forms processing. And we'll call this the Contoso food signup form. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to specify the fields here. So let me go back to the form and just show you what we want to pick out here. First thing I want to do is I want to get the event date. Now, that's something that's not inside of the repeating table here. So when we go back to the model, um, we're going to add that as a field, not as a table. So we'll call this event date and we'll add that. Now we're going to go into the table section. So we're going to specify that there's a new table and we're going to add some of the names. So there's the name of the person, there is the food that they're bringing, and then also the quantity. We'll go ahead and add, say next. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new collection. And we'll upload it from local storage. I will make this training set available on my GitHub repository too, so you can get started really quickly if you want to replicate this example that I'm showing. And the way that this sample set is structured is I have a train folder, which are the files that you would use to train. So we'll go ahead and select all five of those. And we'll go ahead and upload them. Remember, with AI Builder, you need at least five forms to train your model with before you can start using it. So now they're uploaded. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say analyze. So after AI Builder analyzes your documents, initially, you now need to tag these for the fields that we've specified. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hover over the event date. We'll go ahead and click that and we'll tag that as event date. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to identify what the table is. So what we're going to do is here, I'm going to drag a box around, in this case, the data inside of the table. So first I did that. I'm now going to tag that as table one. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to step by step identify what are the values for each row of this table. So I'm going to click over here on the right inside of the first row for name. And then I'm going to draw a box around Adele Vance. I'm going to repeat that for food and we'll select fruit bowl. We'll go to quantity and we'll select quantity. I'm now going to repeat that for the next two rows. Once again, we will get the name. We'll get the food. We will get the quantity and we'll do that one more time. So I'm just going to add another row, click into name. We'll select Nestor, we'll get the food, and then we'll get the quantity. And then we say done. And now we need to repeat that for the next four documents. Now notice in this case, it already identified the event date, which is outside of the table, which is great. Now all we need to do is just train, in this case, what the table looks like. So let's go ahead and draw a box around the table. And we'll choose table one. And once again, let's go ahead and tag this. So we'll select the name, we'll select the food, we'll select the quantity, and we'll add another row. We'll select the name, the food, and the quantity. And we'll say done, and we'll go next. I'll fast forward this video so you don't have to watch me train the next three forms, so it's going to be the exact same process I did up until this point. 
Once you complete all five documents, you can then click Next. And now what we're going to do is we're going to train the model. Okay, so while that's training, we can go back to view all of the models. And we can see here that it's still training. We'll give it a few minutes here to, to finish up. Okay, so now the model is trained. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we can see that it's now trained. Let's go ahead and do a quick test. And we'll take a sample from my device. And remember in this training set, there's the train which you use to train the model with. We're gonna go into test and let's go ahead and choose this first document. And let's see how it does. All right, so what we can see here is that it got the event date correctly. And then it also is identifying the table. Now, one thing to note right now today, we don't get a confidence score for these custom tables. We also don't get to see the actual details inside of the table in this preview. The way to do that is to actually use this inside of a flow. I'll show that to you in a second. Now, the other thing to do before you can use this inside of a Power Automate flow, you do need to publish it. So we'll just go ahead and click here to publish. And now it's published. It's ready to be used both in Power Automate and Power Apps now. All right, so let's see how we can actually use this inside of a Power Automate flow now. So I'm going to create a new instant cloud flow, and I'm going to have this manually trigger a flow. And the first thing I want to do is I want to have a document to be the input for when this flow runs. So in this case, it'll be one of those test forms that we want to run through it. So we'll go ahead and add input, and we'll specify that this will be a file. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a AI Builder step to call that model that was just published. So we'll go ahead and say new step, and we'll click on AI Builder, and then we'll do a search for form. And now we're gonna do the process and save information from form step. And now we'll look for that model that we published. In this case, it was the Contoso Food signup form. And the form type, in this case, we're only gonna be using PDF, so we'll go ahead and choose that. And the form itself is just going to be the input from the previous step. So we'll go ahead and select the file content in this case. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to then send an email to myself with the results of what it's getting from the table element for this form. Now, we will get the raw results of the table back from this step. But the one thing I want to do first is I want to format that into an HTML table so that it looks really nice when it's inside of an email. So let's go ahead and add a new step. And we're going to go to built in and we're going to go to a data operation here and we're going to choose create html table and now what we're going to pass to this is going to be the table one entries that came from the ai builder step so we'll go ahead and choose that i'm going to go into the advanced options here and i want to actually customize what the columns are for this so we're going to have three columns here we're going to have um, the name and in this case the value will be the name value from table one. We also want to identify what's the food that they're gonna bring to the picnic. And so we'll go ahead and once again, choose table one food value. And then lastly, we want to identify the quantity. And then once again, we'll go in here and we'll choose table one quantity value. So now let's do one more step where we'll go ahead and send myself an email with this information. So we'll go to Office 365 Outlook. I want to now send an email. And we'll go ahead and send an email to myself and we'll give it a title of AI Builder Output. And then we're going to put a couple things. Remember, we did also get the event date. So I'll just put the event date first and then we'll add that in the email. So we'll do the event date value. And then the next thing that we're going to add is that now formatted HTML table. So we'll say that this is the uh, table information. And then let's go ahead and add the output from the previous step here. So we'll just choose output. We'll save this. And now I'm going to test this with one of those test PDF documents now. Okay, so let's choose output 17. We'll go ahead and say open. We'll run the flow. And we can now see this flow run real time. And then we'll also see an email show up in my inbox here shortly. So we can see the flow running. It now successfully completed. We could view just the data of the AI Builder output. So we could see all of the table data that it just collected there. We could see what does that HTML table look like when it's formatted. And we can see it's nicely formatted here, which should look exactly the same as the input. Let's just go ahead and pull it up just to make sure that they're the same. You can see all of the data here on the Contoso food sign up on the left does match this nicely formatted table that we have now. So we've totally automated getting something that 
Up until this point, we couldn't do that with the forms processing model. You now have the ability to do that and to customize that too. And lastly, this is the email that was just sent from Power Automate. So you can kind of see the completed email, the final result of this flow. I also wanted to mention today there's a couple of limitations with the feature I'm showing you right now. One of them is in order for this new table extraction to work correctly, you do need to make sure there's some kind of footer at the bottom below the table. If there's nothing below the custom table, this process may not work correctly. The other thing I wanted to mention is let's say that in this case, this table spanned multiple pages. Today, what you would need to do is when you're setting up the model, you would need to set up multiple tables for each pages that you could expect. So let's say that you expect, let's say that you expect your table to span up to three pages. In that scenario, when you're creating the model, you would want to create three tables in your model. And if you have sample data that only has one page, then you would just say that tables two and tables three are not present in that particular document. And then what you would have to do is you have to merge the tables together after the fact. As of this preview, just know that is a limitation today. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it really interesting to see what you can now do with the forms processing model in AI Builder. If you have these complex tables that we just showed in this demo, you can now custom tag those inside of the service. Once again, the training set that I used in this demo will also be available on my GitHub repository. So take a look at the link below to download that to get started really quickly. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions on how you may be able to use this, feel free to put them in the comments below.